Officials, promoters, managers, trainers, and more. Plus, insider news on the sport of boxing. If you're a fight fan, this podcast is a knockout. Now, in this corner, your host, Mike Mickman. It's round 37 of In This Corner. I want to remind you, we come out with a brand new show each and every Thursday. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe on iTunes, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at In This Corner Pod. Coming up just a little later on the show, we have my buddy all the way from Ireland and Baylorick Worldwide Boxing TV, Ingram Jones. We're going to talk about some big guys, probably the biggest heavyweight title fight in a long time at least not in stature, but size-wise. And I'm talking about Vladimir Klitschko and Tyson Fury. And also, there's a lot of heat building with Triple G and Carl Frosch. We'll talk about that and a lot more with Ingram Jones coming up later on In This Corner. We take a look at some of the top boxing news this week, and promoter Bob Arum is going around saying to anyone that will listen that the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight should have been a draw. Bob, I know you're a promoter. I know it's your job to promote, but what fight were you watching? Uh, You can try uh, as hard as you wish. Nobody, and I mean nobody, even wants to talk about Mayweather and Pacquiao. It was such a big disappointment, and yeah, I know about the shoulder problem. Well, that should have been disclosed earlier. Maybe that's why you know, you've know you got a lawsuit against uh, Pacquiao right now, a class action lawsuit, because he let a lot of not only fight fans, a lot of people that put their hard-earned money betting on Manny Pacquiao, and he wasn't right. He didn't fight the fight that he should have. Uh, they fought like they were uh, you know, two cousins. It was a terrible fight, and uh, a draw? No way. Uh, Floyd Mayweather really won the majority of the rounds. I didn't didn't give Manny Pacquiao more than three, four rounds at the most. Well, of course, you can count on uh, PBC premier boxing champions to take the lead in boxing. What they have done is absolutely incredible. They've turned back the hands of time. That's right, they've turned the clock back to the good old days in the 70s and 80s where you could watch all those great middleweight, light heavyweight, and even heavyweight championship fights on free television. ABC, CBS, and NBC. Well, that long disappeared. Most of the big fights in recent years having been on pay-per-view, and if not on pay-per-view, at least on Showtime and HBO, which of course is premium cable. It certainly isn't free and a lot of people today struggling to, you know, to make ends meet and pay their cable bill with uh, cable bills reaching $100 a month and even more with premium channels and internet. A lot of people, you know, do not have HBO and Showtime. It's not as big of audience as you may think that it is. So for PBC to bring it back on free television, a very, very good thing for them. There is a uh, network out there, and I'm very fond of this network, by the way, because they bring back all the classic movies and all the classic television shows for all the baby boomers called Bounce TV. Well, beginning next month, PBC will bring free boxing on this network. The new series on Bounce TV will be called The Next Round. And the reason for that name, they'll be featuring some of the top up-and-coming fighters. In other words, tomorrow's champions. So not only on PBC will you get to see today's top fighters, today's top champions, but you'll be able to see tomorrow's champions. The top up-and-coming fighters will be featured in this brand new series, the next round on PBC. And again, congratulations to uh, Al Heyman and everybody at PBC for bringing more free boxing on television. You know, the only way to grow the boxing base and create more boxing fans is to give it away. You give it away. 
If you got a good product, you give it away. And then when it comes time for the real, real big matchups, everybody's going to know these fighters. They'll be household names. Then you can hit them with a pay-per-view spectacular. But uh, right now, the big thing is to get them to know the names. Well, a fighter that I certainly know, uh, as a matter of fact, I covered one of his later fights in uh, 2013 in Las Vegas. I was the uh, blow-by-blow announcer for that, and I'm talking about Australian great Anthony Mundine, a great fighter, and he's issued an open letter, an open challenge to Floyd Mayweather to be his next opponent for September the 12th, which supposedly, but don't bet money on it, will be Mayweather's last fight. Don't think so, but it will be his next fight. I doubt if it will be his last fight. But Mundine is saying, hey, you know, I can make it interesting. And one thing about Anthony Mundine, and I learned in pre-fight interviews uh, with Mundine and in post-fight interviews and in doing the blow-by-blow in Las Vegas at the Palms Casino Hotel. He is a tough, tough fighter. He can take a punch. Mayweather certainly isn't going to clean the ring up with him. He, you know, he can hit him. He, you know, have a tough time hurting him. He takes a great punch and he's very unorthodox, very unorthodox style. And Mundine, one of the top, really top athletes, goes to a great training regiment, a superstar in soccer as well as boxing. And, you know, at first glance, you may say, well, nah, not really. But I'm telling you, this could be something. Anthony Mundine would be a big international draw, uh, which you really need. You know, you need somebody to draw from other countries. And being an Australian champion with a huge fan base over there and around the world could be a big, big draw for the next fight for Floyd Mayweather Jr. And again, you know, he may not win, but I'll tell you what, I believe he could give Floyd a good fight. Now. Mike introduces his special guest in this corner. Direct from Ireland, my good friend Ingram Jones from Baylor Worldwide Boxing TV. It's been a few weeks since we had you on the show. As you know, Steve had the baby and uh, you over there in Ireland, me here in the little old United States of America. It was tough catching up with you. Good to speak with you, my buddy. Thank you for having me on the show again. Congratulations, Steve. And it's great to be back on the show. You can almost feel the tension. We are getting close. Klitschko Fury, I know you're very close with the uh, uh, Tyson Fury camp. Tell us some of your thoughts on that upcoming fight. Well, I'm close with the Klitschko camp as well. Obviously, James Elibashir I've uh, had connections with for a few years now. Um, I, I'm in a um, rare position to be able to call him Uncle Bashir because he's somebody I talk to outside of just the realm of boxing. So once again, I'm in a unique position of being in both camps, knowing kind of what's going on in both camps. And this fight is going to be very interesting. When I spoke to James El Bashir less than a month ago, he was in his car. And I said, James, how do you feel about the fight? And he said to me, well, to be honest, I see this as a 50-50 fight. I wasn't impressed with Klitschko when he fought Bryant Jennings. And he fights like that. He may get by, beat by Fury on points. I was surprised about that. He wasn't impressed with the way Jonathan Banks took the approach to Klitschko when he was telling Klitschko to box Jennings. He would like to see Klitschko be more aggressive with Bryant Jennings and try and force a stoppage. So it's going to be interesting. As for Tyson Fury, I interviewed him about two weeks ago. And his concerns were he doesn't believe that Klitschko will take the fight first time up. He believes Klitschko is going to pull out. Klitschko's had a history of pulling out fights. He's pulled out against Pulev. He pulled out twice against Derek Chisora. One time famously pulling out a fight against um, Derek Chisora and then spotted the next day after saying that he had a, I think, a rib injury. He was on the golf course playing in a charity tournament. So um, Fury may have a point there. He also said that uh, he preferred the fight to be in the UK where he, feel, he felt he'd be more comfortable fighting Klitschko because he would be able to more, more be able to trust the judging. The fact that he's going to now be fighting in Germany, the purse bids uh, were stopped because at the final moment, Peter Fury, I don't know much more about it. All I know is Peter Fury has had somebody get involved, which means now that there's no need for the purse bids. So there was a backer in the final moments, interestingly enough. And the fight itself will be in Germany, I believe, on October the 24th. 
So that's as much as I know at the moment. And talks are that the fight will be shown on Sky Sports and not Box Nation, which is what Frank Warren is with. So interesting stuff. It's a shame they're not being paid by the pound. Uh, I don't know the exact statistics, but I would have to believe these are two of the biggest fighters in the ring at the same time ever for the uh, heavyweight championship of the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I believe Tyson Fury will be earning about three, three and a half million for the fight. And it's uh, I think it's a 70-30 split. Obviously, 70 uh, Klitschko getting the lion's share of things. You got two punchers in there, and, and I really see this fight going in two parts. Number one is the first half of the fight, but the second half of the fight should be interesting because both of these fighters have been known to have stamina problems in the past. Certainly Klitschko's had it, and uh, we know Tyson Fury has waned in the championship rounds, the later rounds, and now he's going those championship rounds. It could be a problem also for, uh, for Klitschko. Yeah, let's look at the Jennings fight. Um, there were times it looked like Klitschko was slowing down and tiring in the fight against Jennings. So I mean, let's remember now, Klitschko's 40 plus. In terms of Tyson Fury, he said, I don't want to repeat his words exactly, but he said if he can't beat up a 40 year old, he needs a good, well, I won't say the rest. You'll have to guess the rest there. But um, Fury uh, made it quite clear that he believes he should be able to beat up on a 40 year old. Well, uh, it, it all depends who you speak to. You ask George Foreman, he'd say 40 is a baby. You ask Larry Holmes in the second part of his career, he was still beating everybody at 40. So, you know, don't put him in the wheelchair just yet at uh, age 40. Uh, a, a lot of good fights to go, especially if a fighter keeps himself in good condition and uh, doesn't allow himself to get out of shape too badly in between uh, fights. But you've got two punches there, and I really think what you said – uh, who wants to be the aggressor? Who really wants this fight the most? Who gets there, as they say, the firstest with the mostest, I think, is going to take this fight? Well, Tyson Fury has said, look, if I fight in the UK, I've got a better, good, a better chance of winning this fight on points. And I can fight varying styles. If I fight in Germany, I have to take the fight to Klitschko and be aggressive and try and knock this guy out because... I don't see myself winning the fight on points, and I do not want to lose. I don't points. either. I don't no. either. I agree with him there. So he says, "I have. To, I'm going out there, going for the knockout. I am not gonna um, go and look for the points win." Again, Fury said that he it, it's a, it's it's another way out. I'm not going to say exactly what Tyson said, but he used the P word, and he said it's the, it's the P way out to not uh, to to not get knocked out with your gum shield. So. He's going for the knockout because the fight's in Germany. On last week's show, we uh, spotlighted my friend, the late, great Emmanuel Stewart. Manny Stewart's birthday is this week. Would have been 71 years old, a great guy, and uh, he was uh, Klitschko's trainer for quite some time. He was, and uh, you've got to just ask yourself the question. I, you know, I'm a great uh, fan of uh, Bryant Jennings, what he brings to the table. Just wonder what Manny Stewart would have been saying to Klitschko in that corner uh, instead of what Jonathan Banks was saying, and whether the uh, Emmanuel Stewart wisdom is going to be lacking come the big fight against Tyson Fury. You got two big guys, and you know people love the heavyweights. Well, I can honestly tell you, you won't see any bigger heavyweights. You got two of the biggest heavyweights in recent years in the ring the very same time. It should be quite a fight. People love heavyweights. They love that you know possibility of a dramatic one-punch ending, and I certainly think you have that possibility in this fight. Absolutely, but one of the things that people, I think, mistakenly, uh, get fooled by is the fact that people say, oh, Tyson Fury is big, then he should win the fight. I said, no, being big doesn't win you the heavyweight championship of the world. Having a skill set gives you the opportunity to win the heavyweight championship of the world. Being able to have a good jab, being able to have a good right hand, being able to uh, circle and, and, and close the distance down or, or be able to use the, the, the most of the attributes that you have that's what's going to win you the heavyweight championship of the world. Just being big and six foot nine is not going to win you the heavyweight championship of the world. 
I ag- I agree, my friend. That's been tried before with basketball players and football players years ago. Uh, I had some fights with the Eddie Too Tall Jones, uh, right around the seven foot mark. Uh, you know, it's been tried. Big doesn't do it. It's hand speed. It's reflexes. Hand eye coordination. It's timing. Being able to see an opening. Be able to hit what you see. Getting out of the way of a punch. So it's not just big. If it were big, you know, they'd be bringing in professional wrestlers that fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Like I said, they've tried basketball players, the football stars. It, it, it ain't that easy. You've got to have it all. Sometimes, actually, and I've said this many times in the past, big can actually be a hindrance. Once you're past what is a good size for heavyweight, 6'4 to 6'5, if you're above that, sometimes that can actually work against you. And a lot of people, I don't hear a lot of people saying Tyson Fury is 6'9. They don't, I don't hear anybody say there's more of him to hit. But I hear people saying that. I hear people saying, oh, he's bigger. He's bigger than he's bigger than uh, Jennings, so he's got a good chance. But I never hear anybody say to me, you know what? Fury's bigger. He's taller. That means there's more of him to hit. Well, we will certainly find out <laughs> in October. But stay tuned, fight fans. That should be a good fight. You love heavyweights. Doesn't get any bigger than this one. Two big guys in that ring. we got to talk about uh, a guy that I thought was, you know, the end of the world, you know, until his last fight. And he's still not bad. He's got a lot to learn. He's young. Triple G against Carl Frotch. Let's, you know, go inside that fight. Interesting. I spoke to Abel Sanchez, say, about two weeks ago, and he said that uh, Gennady Golovkin was more than happy to face Carl Frotch at Wembley. And negotiations begun. I believe uh, Gennady Golovkin's uh, management team contacted Matchroom Promotions and Eddie Hearn. And the conversation conversation went along the lines of, we contacted Eddie Hearn and Eddie Hearn found it difficult to find Carl Froch and could not contact Carl Froch. So the negotiations had cooled off. Yesterday, Carl Froch posted a picture of himself looking very fresh and in shape as he always is, saying, too big, too strong for Gennady Golovkin. So I saw that, and Dan Raphael, as you know in America, the uh, boxing correspondent. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. There was some heat between uh, uh, Dan and Carl Frotch. They had some some heated words <laughs> against they each other. They did, indeed. Um, I think uh, it, Dan said, well, look, if you, if you believe you're too big and too strong, why don't you make the fight? And if you have any problems getting telephone numbers, I can help you. And... Um, Carl says, I'm not interested in the sort of numbers that you can provide. I think he was probably referring to Dan's personal life and trying to make a snidey comment about that. So I saw that and I thought, "Mm -mm, this ain't looking too good. Let's find out what's really going on. So I contacted Abel Sanchez. And Abel said, I said, Abel, and he refers to me now as handsome. So I say, hi, Abel. He goes, hi, handsome. How you doing? It's, It's just his way of communicating with me. So... I asked him, so what do you think of this thing of Gennady Golovkin being small and Frotch being too big and too strong? He said, well, if that's the case, Carl's more than happy to knock out Gennady Golovkin and then just be it, end it all. Just have the fight, get rid of Gennady Golovkin. But he doesn't believe that's the case. What he believes is that Frotch is trying to sort of go past the sell-by date and just keep talking about Golovkin because he's a new kid on the block. He's the hottest thing on the block. So Frotch is trying to keep his name relevant. And um, if he wants to fight, Gennady can be ready in eight weeks' time. And they're very serious about the fight. They've got no problems moving up to super middleweight to fight Carl Froch. They want his name. They want his name. And that's the super fight that people are talking about. So it's either Froch wants to fight and he takes the fight or he retires. It's one or the other. But if you're posting things out on Twitter like too big, too strong, then you think that he's up for the fight. And then as soon as I posted the interview to Carl Froch, his response was, I'm more likely to fight R2-D2 for the science fiction championship of the world than fight Gennady Golovkin. So make what you want of that. Doesn't sound too good, does it? Uh, you know, the old saying, put your money where your mouth is. Uh, too big, too strong. Well, then fight them and we'll find out. Too big, too strong. But that could be an interesting uh, matchup if and when it happens. I know you're involved uh, in something new called This Week in Boxing. Let's talk about that. Yes, uh, Adam Noble Falsey, 
uh, from 4C Sports Media, doing a lot of interesting interviews and boxing interviews from around the world. And uh, Bayloric TV, as I've said many times, we're the champion among champions. We look for the champions. We look for the people who are doing the, the great stuff as, as yourselves. And interview well, we, we had Adam uh, on the show uh, uh, earlier. Fantastic. And um, exactly. So just to find out what he does, what he's about. And he said to me, look, after I interviewed him, he said to me, look, I'm doing a new show called What's This Week in Boxing. I'd like to invite you on the show. So he invited me on the show and I was more than happy to talk about This Week in Boxing, which was last week. Many exciting things, especially over in your part of the, uh, the world, uh, heating up over there. Absolutely. Um, Carl Frampton has signed with Al Heyman. Who uh, hasn't? So, go ahead. Who hasn't? <laughs> Is there That's anybody that, that Al Heyman doesn't have? I don't know. Um, also, Eddie Chambers has signed with Al Heyman as well. I've wanted to add that as well. Spoke to Eddie. He's happy to have signed with Al Heyman. Um, Andy Lee is going to be making his uh, defense of the world title against Billy Joe Saunders. That will be an interesting fight. And I believe that's going to be in Limerick in Ireland. So could be interesting in Ireland. Also, Tyson Fury may be doing his training camp in Ireland as well. So if he's in Ireland, I'll be able to get to meet the big man. All right. And um, hopefully uh, we'll be speaking with him and uh, hopefully be speaking with you. We won't make it so long this time, even though it's a, a long distance uh, across the water. Uh, we won't wait so long to have you back on the show. We always enjoy you being here and uh, having you on in this corner. Thank you so much. You guys are doing a great job. And I hope that more people are listening to the show. We've got a great podcast. And uh, thank you both to yourself and Steve. Well, that's it for round 37 of In This Corner. Hope you enjoyed the show. And again, a big thanks to my special guest, Ingram Jones from Baylorick Worldwide Boxing TV. Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at In This Corner Pod, and subscribe on iTunes. We come out with a brand new show each and every Thursday. Until next week, I'm Mike Mittman, and we'll see you at the fight. You've been listening to In This Corner with Mike Mittman. Explore InThisCornerPodcast.com to connect with Mike, to ask the champ Larry Holmes, to access show notes and more. In This Corner. In This Corner Podcast.com. In This Corner. This has been a Steve Mittman social media creation. Creation. Steve Mittman social media.com. Dot com. Dot com.